singing uh, the service music, however, so welcome and uh, happy Father's Day. Isn't it today Father's Day? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, fathers. We've got two of them at least in here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to get quiet. I forgot. I, we're going to do stuff. I'm going to get ready to go. I'm going to get quiet over that. We'll get ready to worship God and sing. <coughs> Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Philistines gathered their armies for battle. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And a span, sorry, that's about nine and a half feet. He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze, over 90 pounds. He had greaves of bronze on his legs and a javelin of bronze slung to his shoulder. The shaft of his spear was like a meter's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, over 13 pounds. And his shield bearer went before him. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel. Why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves, and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, Today I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elam, fighting with the Philistines. David rose early in the morning, left the sheep of the king, took the provisions, and went as Jesse had commanded him. He came to the encampment as the army was going forth to the battle line, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage, ran to the ranks, and went and greeted his brothers. As he talked with him, them, the champion of the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came up out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the same words before. And David heard him. David said to Saul, Let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. You are just a boy, and he has been a warrior for his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David 
David said, The Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword with the armor. He tried to walk, tried in vain to walk, but he was not used to that. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the body and put them in his shepherd's bag, in the pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God, of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head, and I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord is not saved by sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Proclaim to the peoples what the Lord has done. Let us read portions of Psalm 9, 9 20 responsibly by half verse, repeating the refrain at the end. The Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed. For refuge in time of trouble. Those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you never forsake those who seek you, O oh Lord. Sing praise to the Lord who dwells in Zion. For to the peoples the things he has done. The avenger of the flood will remember them. He will not forget the cry of the afflicted. Have pity on me, O oh Lord. See the misery I suffer from those who hate me. O oh, you who lift me up from the gates of death. So that I may tell of all your praises and rejoice in your salvation. In the, in the gates of the city of Zion, the ungodly have fallen into the pit they dug, and in the despair they have set as their own foot caught. The Lord is known by his acts of justice, but the wicked are trapped in the works of their own hands. The wicked shall be given over to the grave. And but also all the people that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. And the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Rise up, O Lord. Let not the ungodly have the upper hand. Let them be judged before you. Put fear upon them, O Lord. Let them not only know that they are the Lord. Proclaim to the peoples what the Lord has done. A reading from Second Corinthians. As we work together with Christ, 
we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Said to the sea, Peace, be still. 
Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe, and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We have this big story about David and Goliath. Most of us are familiar with it. Uh, but the thing that stands out to me today, and it's kind of the same thing that stands out in the gospel for me, is that in the story of getting ready to, for David, the next king, the, the king in waiting to go to kill this big old giant, the buildup is really great. We've got a calling. Uh, David here from the fox, and, and him saying, I'll go up uh, eat this all going, you know, you're just a kid. He goes, look, I've killed plenty of my life. I'm doing fine. He doesn't want to wear the armor. He needed to do battle in his own skin, if you will, in the way that he was comfortable. He wasn't comfortable with the standard practice of the military. And so we have this whole thing about him getting dressed out, and they tell us all everything he's wearing, and then he says, yeah, this isn't going to work. And he goes and gets stones, and he and they have all this saber rattling, I'm gonna cringe it on the birds and all this. And then he comes up to the line, he gets a stone, he flings it, he hits him, and Wyatt is dead. It's kind of anticlimactic. We're waiting for some big battle scene, and it's like bang, and it's over. Now there's plenty of blood and guts coming up. If you want to read about it, you go ahead. But in this story, we have the build-up is, is all this big stuff. And actually, the, the killing of the giant was just bang in the head, and that was the end of it. I see something similar to that in our gospel today. We've got Jesus in the boat with the disciples. It says that you know, he, wanted, he wanted to take the disciples off somewhere to get alone, to get away from the crowds who were clamoring after them all the time to get off and go pray and get centered. And they could see there wasn't any way. They were already in the boat. There was no way for them to go off onto to the mountain at this point. He said, let's just go across to the other side. That's what it says. They took him just as he was, meaning they were in the boat. They, were, they just went. Now, the Sea of Galilee is called the sea for a reason. It's not an ocean. But it's really, really big. And it has tides. And it has great squalls that come and turn up the water. Now, he, Jesus, that's what's happening. We read this big storm is swamping the boat. But you know, he's in a boat with a bunch of lifelong experienced fishermen. And that was probably their own boat. They've been in storms before. What's the difference? You know? Well, the difference is they got Jesus with them and he didn't seem to care. He's sleeping in the back of the Oh, I read something recently. He wasn't, uh, God, it wasn't uh, the prophet that was hiding from Baal. And he says, I'm, I'm just, I'm mad, I don't want to die. And God says, look, eat something, take a nap, you'll feel better. <laughs> so, you know, it's like Jesus, like, you guys, I need a nap. I'm going to go feel better. But the storm comes up, and he's not, he's not all concerned about it. And so, you know, they're, we're, they're getting rocked about and buffeted. There's water in the boat. They're freaking out. And then they say, don't you care about us? You're dying here. What do you don't you even care? And Jesus, you know, sits up and in our translation says, he says, peace be still. There's nice Christian songs about peace be still. But the flavor of what he really said in the original translation, what he said to the wind and the waves was to sit down and shut up. Quit blowing, quit waving. Just he just said, enough, stop, be still. It wasn't, oh peace. Be still in your heart. He said, peace, be still. And they did. It's kind of anticlimactic. I mean, people may have been expected some big incantation and 
their time maybe Jesus said, oh, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I say this not for my benefit, but for theirs, so that they know. But no, he just said, waves, stop it. What? They said, wow. Oh, my God. Ours says they were in awe. Other translations says terrified. They recognized this was something different than all of the other miracles that Jesus had done, all because even healings and, and feedings and all those things, there were lots of people wandering around all over the place who were miracle workers and healers and, and through magic and other means. They could do a lot of the stuff maybe that Jesus had shown or done, of course, without the, the, the God part. But this was different because only God can make the wind stop blowing. Only God can make the waves stop still. And so it was like, oh my. It wasn't, it doesn't, well, they were terrified because of the waves. They were also terrified because Jesus knew to stop. But for me today, the key in all of this is do they really think that Jesus cares enough about them to kill the storm, to, or to calm the storm so that they're not killed? Don't you care about us? It's sort of like us. If you care about me, I'm going to be going through this hardship. Obviously, he cares about them. He's just not riled up by the same stuff that they're riled up by. What's going on in this story, this scene, is exactly the same thing going on in the beginning of creation. In the beginning, God came to bring order out of chaos. Now I think, you know, how I believe the universe was created a big bang, and there's a lot of chaos from that, right? And God comes in in our creation myth, our creation story, and brings order to all of that. He separates the light from the dark, and the sky from the land, and the water from the, whatever he separates, you know, there's a lot of that. He's bringing order out into the chaos. That's what Jesus is doing in this boat. They are absolutely in chaos. And the word storm often was a metaphor for chaos around the people. And he's bringing order out of that. Before violent waves and wind, after dead calm. That's the peace. That's what God does in creation. And I think that's what God always does. God brings and gives and imposes, maybe. I don't know, that's kind of hard. Order out of chaos. There's a term in ancient uh, in Eastern mythology, predates a lot of these even Old Testament stories. It's a, the notion of the chaos monsters. The chaos monsters. And there's one, I, I, I tried to find it, I just remember my Old Testament professor uh, translating one of the things in, in Scripture that the chaos monsters are lurking behind every door. That's, a, that's an image, that's a metaphor in life. And what God does is take the power out of those chaos monsters, move them out, bring some more. Now, I know when chaos monsters are, are going out and in my life, one of the big ones that's, that's obvious for everybody to see when my office gets so piled up with papers and boxes I can't walk through it, okay, that's chaos. Those are the chaos monsters. Now, you may think I like it that way because it's been that way a long time. <laughs> I don't. Because when my surroundings are in chaos, Maybe it's the laundry piling up, or the dishes aren't done, or I have too many things on my schedule I can't remember. You all have it in your own whatever, plug in your own place. But when all of that chaos is around me, whether it's my own making or not, I, just, I get nervous, I get anxious, because I can't sort out, I don't know what I'm supposed to do next. You know, where am I? I know I have that note somewhere, which pile is it in? And it becomes so overwhelming 
that I just don't do. I gotta tell you right now, I had a very chaotic weekend. I got a pile of laundry about this spot big sitting at home, and I walk by it. I've been walking by it for days, going, I can't face that. Because that's that's kind of a piece of the chaos that's in, in my house right now. Maybe this afternoon I'll try to fold it up. Chaos monsters work. And they're here to make us feel afraid and anxious and to prevent us from doing the things that we need to do. And Jesus, God, steals that storm, brings order out of that chaos, enables us to take a breath and say, chaos monsters, shut up and sit down. That's the peace that passes all understanding. God doesn't promise that we're never going to be in the storms. God doesn't promise that we're not going to be buffeted or come into situations that are scary. But remember, we're in a boat. We're not out in the waves. And Jesus, God incarnate, is in the boat with us. And just because God, Jesus, Christ, Spirit, whichever peace you want to name right now, just because they're not freaking, just because God isn't freaking out by the same kind of chaos that's freaking us out, and just because God isn't making everything smooth and beautiful and easy and peaceful in the world around us so we can walk through it better, doesn't mean God isn't with us, and it doesn't mean God doesn't care about us. If God didn't care, we'd be on our own. But we're not. Jesus is in the boat with us. So tell those old chaos monsters to scoot. Because we've got the living God to help us journey to the other shore. Amen. Continuing on page four, I think. Please let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, God of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified, and has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
and reveal your glory in the world. For in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources brightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those on our prayer list, including Diane, Matthew, James, Harry, Sharon, Sandra, Kay, Norm, Jerry, Rose, Alan, those for whom our prayer chain intercedes, and we pray for any others who may care to now name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those working in other dangerous professions, such as the military, in hospitals, emergency services, law enforcement, and for firefighters, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of North India, united. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Michael's and all angels, Patty Ann Bennett, director. In the parish cycle of prayer, we pray for physical relief and development, and for Claire and Jack Snyder, Michael, Sharon, John Michael, Alex and Anthony Somstad, and Carla and Lee Stad. And all this we pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Merciful God, God, God we may have sinned in what we have thought and said, in the wrong we have done, and in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance, we have sinned in weakness, we have sinned for our own deliverance. We are truly sorry. We repent and turn to you. Forgive us for our Savior Christ's sake, and renew our lives to the glory of your name. Amen. Through the cross of Christ, God have mercy on you, pardon you, and set you free. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. God strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ will always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. And do your best to sing this wonderful song. I'll sing the pieces of this song.
your song is on the top of page six.
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, because we share the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ overcomes the chaos, and feed on Christ in your hearts by faith and thanksgiving. Body of Christ in our heaven. The blood of Christ, they have no salvation. We are still just receiving uh, communion in the bread alone. Please know that the whole sacrament is there. Thank you. 
Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 